Ladies and gentlemen, he's the samurai of student ministry, the networking ninja, a Jedi master of church budgets, the beast from the southeast, the next gen nerd himself, CJ! What's up, my nerds? Welcome to the Next Gen Nerd Podcast. Glad to have you with us. Today's interview is with my friend Stephen Valdez of Safe Point Ministry, and we're going to be talking about X-Men, so it's going to be fantastic. So make sure you uh, buckle up, because we spent a lot of time talking about the great cartoon show with one of the best theme songs that's ever existed that ran from 92 to 97 on Fox. So uh, X-Men is a topic today, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. If you like the content, make sure you are subscribed. So uh, on YouTube, uh, on the podcast, make sure you're following us on our socials because we drop stuff throughout the week, uh, and especially as we're kind of ramping up with adding video and doing some Twitch streaming and things like that, you're going to want to make sure that you are connected to us everywhere we're at because you don't want to miss it. Uh, and if you like it, let us know. Uh, drop a comment here on the YouTube video, or uh, you can write a review for the podcast. Um, give us five stars, give us a thumbs up, all those things. We would really appreciate that feedback. Uh, we'd really appreciate that support, and that'd be a, a big help, a big help. And if you leave a comment on the YouTube, then we'll make sure that we mention it in next week's show. Uh, I think that's just about it, and uh, glad if you're watching it with us on YouTube. Uh, this is our first week doing video, and we uh, I think it's going to be really good, really a nice addition to the show. But without further ado, let's get nerdy. Well, guys, like I mentioned at the top of the show, I am here with Steve Valdez, and we're going to be talking about X-Men, uh, and we're really excited about that, really excited about the topic. It is a, I mean, just a, a bright spot of my childhood. But before we get talking about X-Men, I want to I want to talk to Steve, I want to, to introduce you to him. He does uh, work with Safe Point Ministries, which I'm going to give him a chance to talk about that at the end of the show. But first, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, how are you doing, man? Like, what's what's exciting in your life right now, aside from work, aside from Safe Point? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then once we're done with that, like, what are some of your nerdy interests outside of X-Men? So uh, right now, things are really good. Uh, just a really good, but really busy. Uh, you know, Safe Point's going great. But you said other than that, I work at a local game store. And that's just fun. Like it's my fun job. And so uh, getting to just chat with people about board games and Magic the Gathering and Flesh and Blood, you know, TCGs, things like that is super cool. Uh, a really cool thing that happened recently is uh, I used to play Magic the Gathering a ton when I was younger and uh, like up until my college years. But I got out of it, but I kept all my cards and I recently pulled them out and taught my son how to play. And I'm like falling <laughs> in love with it all over again. I'm playing magic with my son. We built his first deck together. Uh, it's a sapperling deck and it works well. He gets, you know, like 50 tokens out and it's hilarious, but uh, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. So uh, I guess, you know, favorite part of my life right now was just uh, discovering and rediscovering a lot of games, board mm -hmm. games, rediscovering Magic the Gathering, things like that has been super duper fun. Really cool. Again, playing a lot of board games for the first time ever because of my work. Uh, nerdy interests in general. Uh, I have a lot. Like, I mean, if you guys could, he said we're on camera now, so you can see my shelf behind me. A uh, big fan of Batman, but my favorite comic book character is actually Tim Drake, the third Robin. Uh, I love Nightmare Before Christmas. I just finished reading the Nightmare Before Christmas sequel book called Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. I'm a big fan of Star Wars. I grew up with it. Uh, video games. I love the art of video games, story writing, all this other stuff. But most recently, uh, I've really gotten into the game Grounded. It's an older game, not super duper old. It's basically Honey, I Shrunk the Adventure Game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's an adventure game, but uh, uh, or survival game. It's a survival game, but you're out there like collecting supplies and you got to eat, you got to drink, you got to build your base and everything like that. But it all takes place in somebody's backyard and you're like half an inch tall. Nice. And so the enemies are like ants and spiders and the spiders are terrifying. But uh I've never really gotten into a game like this before, but I've got a couple of friends who were like, let's just build a, a world together. Let's just do this together. And we've been playing it for like six months now. And it's so fun, dude. It's so fun. Nice. Very nice. So uh, board games wise, what's a, a board game right now that's the top of your list? Oh, man. see, that's tough because there's all kinds of different styles of board games. So. Mm -hmm. As far as just like strategy goes, uh, Star Realms is the okay. top of my list one. It's a game that you can sit down. If you guys never played, uh, it's a deck building game where you have a simple deck of eight 
like coins and two damage. They're called scouts and vipers. Eight coins and two damage. And then you lay out a bunch of ships and they have different costs. And you buy a new ship, you put it into your deck, and when your deck runs out, you shuffle it and put it back. And so you draw into those cards that you had bought before, and you're trying to build this strategy and these synergies as you're building this deck, and it's all space-themed. And it's super cool, really easy to learn. My whole family, including my eight-year-old, plays it, and we have a great time with it. On the totally other side of things, <laughs> uh, it's in your background right now, the Adventure Zone. Yes. Cooperative yep. storytelling game. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's so good. I just uh, had a uh, like a, a weekend getaway with a bunch of friends, and it was like a board game weekend. And one that none of them had ever played was Adventure Zone. And I brought my game, and it was an instant hit. We played it like three different times and just laughed again if you guys have never played it's basically everybody takes on the role of a traditional fantasy you know D, &D character bard cleric but you're meant to add something else to it like uh in this case i was a rogue and a second grade teacher mm -hmm. and they ask you like well, what how do you help your friends and i said you know like with positive encouragement and all my craft supplies and <laughs> and so like you you get faced with these challenges and you're meant to describe how you succeed in these challenges and you can help each other and you got to describe how you're helping each other and it's all this cooperative storytelling and it's hilarious you know the big hit was my lisa frank uh uh thieves tools <laughs> you know like shaped like like go like like pink dolphins and whatnot like it's just you know it's a hilarious game it's so fun it's so so good well, very nice, very nice, very nice. Um, so uh, we're talking about X Men ninety two. Well, I, I call it X Men ninety two. It was originally X Men yeah. the animated series. Right. Um, the reason why it's called X Men ninety two is because it came out in ninety two, uh, and Disney is currently working on a sequel series called X Men ninety seven, because the series ran from ninety two to ninety seven, uh, right. and it was uh, seventy six episodes. Sixty five of them were done before Marvel went bankrupt. Uh, and the last 11 yeah. was a much lower <laughs> budget. Uh, I don't think I've ever watched the last 11. So I'm watching. Nor have I. I was, <laughs> I was going to talk about that. Yeah. I have not actually seen these. <laughs> so I'm, I'm watching slowly with, through them with my kids. Usually after dinner, we'll watch an episode or two. Um, but for me, uh, this series came out when I was in from second grade to seventh grade, which are like the perfect years for a kid to be watching this series. Uh, and I, I love, them. I love them. in addition to watching them on the Saturday morning cartoon block, uh, pizza Hut ran a tie-in where if you got a large pizza, they would give you a cassette tape with two episodes. And I had two of those. I had the first tape, which is the first two episodes, Night of the Sentinels. And I had um, the third tape, which is five and six, which is when uh, Scott and Gene go into the sewers and meet the Morlocks. Yeah. Uh, and so, so like when, when we're watching those, like when I'm watching those with my kids, like I know them word for word because I burned those tapes up, burned them up, watched them over and over again. Um, and so uh, I have those. And then I remember my dad, I don't know why, but he was recording like several shows for us on VHS. I think it was so that when we got to his house, like he could put it in and we could watch that and leave him alone for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was the season three opener um, uh, with Lady Deathstrike, uh, with with Wolverine's girlfriend. Man, and you hit on some big ones that I want to talk about. Both <laughs> that one uh, with the Morlocks and th that yeah. one right there with, with Lady Deathstrike. So I watched those episodes like a thousand times a piece. A thousand times a piece. Love the show. Uh, and so when we were talking about possible topics, you mentioned that and I was in. Like My only hesitation was i'm only halfway through season four in my rewatch but uh it's okay i think we've got plenty to talk about so yeah oh absolutely steven why do you love 92 x-men so i loved it as a kid because uh this weird thing that happened in the 90s was shows were pretty serious back then even for kids like sure we had like ren and stimpy and whatever else but we had uh batman the animated series and um and x-men 92 and, and like a lot of other shows that addressed some really mature topics right. and treated kids like they were smart enough to understand these things because shocker we were and and kids are like they didn't underestimate kids like so so many shows have done in the past and i remembered all this as a kid and then it dropped on disney plus and mm. i was thinking to myself was it as like cool and mature as i remember it like do i feel did i deserve to feel as smart uh, for thinking about the stuff as it as a kid and i rewatched it and yes like absolutely <laughs> yes it is crazy just how still relevant a lot of this stuff right. is of you know th these people i mean obviously this is all based on um 
Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. And the whole idea of there is this race of people that everybody hates just for them existing. There is one person on one side that is saying, we need to work together. We need to create peace. We need to, you know, make sure that we are, are trying to find a way to, to peacefully work together. And on the other side, there's one saying, we need to fight back. We need to force ourselves into equality. We need to, and, and neither of them are wrong. It's just two really different ways of addressing a problem in the situation. And again, that was exactly Malcolm X and, and uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And then we bring that into the Magneto right. and Professor X respectively. And they hit all these points. Mm. They hit the points of the the unnatural hatred for no reason at all. The, just the fear in this. They have basically the the supremacists in the uh, the um, – Oh my gosh, what are they called? There's the group of 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 humans that are like they're they're terrorists fighting against mutants, uh friends of humanity. F O H. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Friends of humanity are out there doing this stuff. And uh, you know, Beast gets arrested, and there's this question of we could break you out at any moment. We're we're superhumans. We could break you out at any second. And he's like, No, I need to serve my sentence because if you just break me out, they're, they're just right. gonna feed the fear. Oh man, it just so there's no comedic relief there's no joking the one that i always say is there's no my cabbages you know that's kind of the the running joke through the avatar series which is also a pretty mature good show but there's none of that it's all a hundred percent action action drama and it's so good for it i love it i really do so uh you mentioned you know the the martin Luther king malcolm x uh there are several other things too that they wrap the issue in in mutants, so so X Men is following uh, the specific mutants characters in the Marvel universe, and so right. um, uh, there are there are plenty of superheroes that are outside that realm that are uh, that are modern day gods or that are technologically superior or whatever else. But these are going after uh, a specific group of superheroes that are mutated humans, uh, and so they wrap those issues in there. And so I thought it was funny. I was looking at they have a list of several issues um, like that, and so um, uh, they went over uh, the AIDS hysteria. Uh, and mm -hmm. um, uh, and you mentioned uh, that that those race issues. Uh, they talk about the Holocaust because Magneto went through the Holocaust. Yes, Magneto is a Holocaust survivor. Yeah. <laughs> He's a legit Holocaust survivor. <laughs> uh, they go over uh, you know feelings of loneliness and depression, and and there's all kinds of it. They're they're going over even Christianity, which I told uh, I was telling my oh, son. I episode. think I, I think we're at that episode. I think we're at that episode because if I'm if I remember correctly, it's in season four where Nightcrawler leads Wolverine to Christ. Oh, uh, and, and I'm uh, like, <laughs> oh, like wiping tears. Oh, so good. Uh, so, uh, and, and and Nightcrawler is is Zeke's favorite, uh, is my son's favorite uh, X-Men. And so he's real excited. He's real excited about, about that episode. But but you're right. They, they they cover all these these complex issues and they they wrap it in, I guess, kind of like candy, the fact that it's superhero related. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we can talk about these things. It was just, you're right. I mean, why would you so another thing they have there was talking about divorce uh with uh with the episode Proteus and so uh mm. why would you I'm literally literally watching that episode right now <laughs> last night I started it I had to stop midway and I'm going to finish it later but I remember I remember the whole episode so oh there's, that episode there's there's so there's so many things that they're covering and kids are dealing with these things anyways you know I yes. mean especially divorce and loneliness whatever else and so it's I think it makes it uh, an approachable topic I, I had a college class uh it was ethics class and he showed clips from Futurama and Simpsons and Family Guy to communicate difficult ethical challenges. I think there's there's room for a student or a, a children's curriculum using X Men clips to, to help. Him. I think so. Preach. I think so. TM TM TM. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, <laughs> and so. Uh, we love this show. We love this show. Yes, we um, do. But watching it again, there are some weak points. Okay, if we're going to be completely honest, coming back, uh, what oh, were yeah. and funny enough, the biggest weak point that I saw, I don't think was I think was intentional, anyways. But what are some weak points that you see in the series? I mean, I think the obvious ones were just animation quality and dialogue. I mean, these are things of the reality of corporations like Fox who put on who put this on at the time they didn't want to put that high of a budget into a children's cartoon. They knew they could get away with, you know, bottom of the line budget and kids would still love it. And that would sell toys, which is what they really cared about. And so the animation is moderate and it actually, I I think gets worse as I'm, you're talking about the budget getting lower and yes, lower as the yes. season. And it does. And, uh, and then the dialogue is very canned. Um, the overarching stories they're telling are so appropriate like so a uh, big and so like awesome and amazing but the actual like 
face-to-face -face dialogue oftentimes <laughs> is super predictable and really canned like a lot of stuff in the 90s was so uh, to me that that is like the one thing that i'm like man i which is why i'm stoked for this x-men 97 yes. because you know they're gonna put a bigger budget into it yep you yep. know they yep. are so yeah yeah Disney money. Uh, so, so funny enough, you mentioned the the dialogue. Uh, I just finished a audiobook adaptation of Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, and mm -hmm. it was very similar. This kind of very melodramatic, over the top dialogue, which is all throughout the X Men series. And I realized, I wonder if that's because that's kind of how comic books are written. I mean, the the right. faces are always Absolutely. twisted. It's always big and over the top. Uh, so that may have been intentional. You know, it may have been intentional well that that was going on. And not to mention that they have to communicate these really big ideas to children and right. the best, like the target, dem target demographics got to be eight years old. Right. And for an eight year old to fully comprehend these things, sometimes you have to look at the camera and say, I feel sad right now because <laughs> you're judging me about my, something I can't handle, something I can't control. And like just really, really straightforward, really direct stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you have to do that when that's your target demographic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which which is a good point. And, that, the, and the second thing I thought, which ties into that as well, is is it's like there's a bow put on the end of every 22 minutes. You know what I mean? Like there mm -hmm. are some mm. there there are some uh, stories that carry across two or three, or in the case of the Phoenix Saga, nine That's episodes. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but but so often you have this like this flash in the pan. We're gonna look at this issue. We're gonna look at this villain. We're gonna introduce this character. But in 22 minutes, they're gonna disappear from the rest of the series. Uh, and uh, <laughs> So like that was a, that was a bummer for me. It's like, oh man, I really wish we saw more of this character or this setting or this theme. But that could have been again. You've got eight year olds watching this, and are they going to come back week to week to week to, to right. keep up on this? Maybe not. I I will say though, in the first probably three even three and a half seasons, they do have like five story uh, five episode story arcs, and you know six episode story arcs, and even sometimes two episode story arc. But remember that because we're going to bring it back next season, you know, <laughs> right. things like that. And like these big, long things in my brain, something that to this day for no reason, like they had, like uh, lives in my brain rent free is just the phrase previously thump on X-Men, yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly that. Because yeah. when I hear that, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. It's going to be good because for whatever reason, they need you to know stuff from before to tie into now because they're building a better story a longer story and so just that that literally that phrase previously on x-men to this day will get me like yes i'm, I'm stoked <laughs> now <laughs> uh the uh the theme song we, we didn't even talk about the theme song but oh one of the greatest gosh. cartoon theme songs my kids have, and rips man i love it they asked me one time to sing the theme song now steven there are no words what? in this theme song. There's no words in this theme song. And so I'm like, okay. And so I was singing it and I would like, when the text would come across, I would sing it. And now every time it comes on, they'll, they'll sing it. And my favorite part is when it's uh gambit beast and Jubilee, they'll go dun 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 yeah. gambit dun 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 beast dun 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 Jubilee. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I need to, I need to record them doing it and put it at the beginning of the show because it is, I mean, every time, uh, it's it's good stuff. Uh, I love so, that man. That's so good. <laughs> so we don't we don't hey, skip. You got to record that whole thing, man. Record yes. the whole thing and send it to me. I'm gonna we sing will. it that uh, way. We'll too. do it. We'll do it. Uh, yeah, it, it, we don't skip the titles. We, we like them singing them. Um, That's right. So uh, so we talked about why we love it, but really let's let's kind of dr drill down a little bit. Who are your favorite X Men? X Men villains, characters, uh, and and why are they your favorites? Why do you think they're your favorites? So I, I have to have to be cliche just because I was the time of graphic when it came out, but Wolverine, man. Yeah, yeah, I he get it. He was the cool guy. He was so tough, which is really ironic because watching it as an adult now, I'm realizing, number one, they couldn't have him cut a single human being with those claws. <laughs> he threatens so many people with them, but because it's, you know, children's television, right. they could not have him actually injure anybody with these claws. And so... He is often so stunted. Well, he'll threaten everybody and nothing will ever happen with it. Like, it's real funny. But he was so cool, so tough. You know, the lone wolf trope was a big thing at that time, too. But you actually see his character evolve over time. And I just finished an episode where it's like an alternate future or actually an alternate present where he and Storm had fallen in love. Mm -hmm. And seeing his character, like, have this different aspect to mm -hmm. him. And then they come back to the normal time. And they just show Wolverine and, and Storm having a picnic together. 
and uh and it's you know that that thing where she kind of like she's like are you flirting with me and he's like ha, 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 you know i wouldn't do that and it's like this real general heartfelt moment of you seeing his character sort of soften as time passes and whatnot so uh he's a really interesting and well-rounded character but also he's just he's the cool guy oh bub he is he is so uh i mentioned i was in second grade so my younger brother would have been kindergarten moving forward and his name is logan and so when we were watching this and wolverine's name is logan like he's like well that's my guy so i I could not yeah. pick i was not allowed to pick logan i couldn't yep. pick him uh because he was already taken so i had i had a different one but uh any others that that's come to mind as, as favorites of yours of the series well Magn magneto is probably mm -hmm. the most interesting character to me mm -hmm. he is so often in there and so often doing quote unquote bad things but they allow him the time to talk over things and to explain why and they, like i was saying before you can't say that he's wrong per se everything that he's doing is a terrorist act but it's to stop this is they're building machines that are there to kill us mm. and so i'm going to destroy that factory yeah and you know things like that that just makes sense when you think at it from his perspective and they don't again the x-men will talk about him like and oh now we're gonna fight magneto or you know oh, when we go fight that bad guy magneto but then they show magneto and the voice actor crushes it by the way i i don't i can't give him credit dang i don't know who, who it was but uh he crushes it he's such a good and convincing person especially when they go to asteroid m and mm. there's this whole point where he's like fine i give up on earth just come live with me up here in peace. And and that obviously fails spectacularly. No spoilers, but because you guys should all go watch this show. Yeah. But um, he is such an understandable, and I don't even want to use the word villain, antagonist. He's such an understandable, right. well-written antagonist. He, to me, he's the most interesting character. Yeah, and, and two, looking at his background versus Xavier's background, you know, mm. it, it, mm. it really spells out why they behave the way they do. So you have Magneto, who wants to defend his people, fight for his people, uh, and he was a Holocaust survivor, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he's already lived through this once and seen how it plays out. And so, of course, he doesn't want to wait around to see if they'll come around. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, let's let's not do that. Like, they they won't. That's This is this is who humans are. Uh, right. And so you have, you have that piece. And then you have Xavier, who lives this very privileged existence. I mean, he had his... Had his stuff, had his issues, had his things he had to go through, um, but lived a very privileged ex uh, existence and saw the good of people. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. was was surrounded mm -hmm. by the good of people and 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 people who cared about him and things like that. Um, so it's it, it makes sense why they live the way they live uh, or why they why they uh, pursue peace the way they pursue it. Uh, but also very interesting. I would I would agree with you. Magneto is one of my favorites. I always think I, I wish I had Magneto's powers when I'm in traffic and I could just like take that car and that one's gone. And this car Except and for this me, it's gone. the force. If I had the force, I'd be moving cars out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, but as far as X Men go, I had two favorites. I had one when I first started watching the series. It was Beast. Uh, I loved the the. I, I don't know if I realized it as a kid, but the fact that he was so smart and so strong at the same time. Um, really like he, that i also he's meant to be a juxtaposition again yes. the, the the writing that's there and is so good but he's this living juxtaposition of big strong animal hairy man and absolute brilliant well-spoken shakespeare quoting genius yes. like i love it <laughs> yes uh and then the other i mean is 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 gambit uh i've got my my my, my gambit funko ready to go you know i so uh <laughs> the the smooth speaking louisiana cajun um i i think a good so cool. uh I think if you don't have him, you never have any growth with Wolverine and Cyclops. I think he's I think he's the buffer between the two. He is he is foolhardy enough to see where Wolverine's coming from, but he's got mm -hmm. enough of a good head on his shoulders to be able to so I I really that what he brings to the table. Uh, and his powers are just cool. I'm gonna pick this up and it's gonna explode. I'm gonna throw it at you. It's gonna explode. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. I'm gonna I can pick it up and it's going hey, to explode. Hey, you see that thing? Want to see it blow up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the episode where, where Rogue accidentally steals his powers and she keeps trying to get a cup of coffee and it keeps blowing right. up. Right, like yeah, that would uh, that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. Um, so those would be those would be my favorites. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up. I have these questions in a certain order, but I'm gonna switch it because I think it works better this way. Yeah, uh, make it happen. Uh, which heroes villains do you think need more screen time? Maybe in this next series that we'll see some more of them. What what stands out to you? Like, I really want, I need more of this. And it could just be, I need more Wolverine. More Wolverine, more Wolverine, more Wolverine. <laughs> but, but if there's other ones that you think need more screen time. 
Now, they actually, I, I mean, I would love more Wolverine, but I think they give him a lot of really well-deserved and really well-written screen time. There's a whole uh, uh, episode with Alpha Flight and his backstory and everything like that. But uh, as far as villains go, Mr. Sinister is the most yeah. devious, mustache-twirling villain. He's genuinely, <laughs> appropriate to his name, Sinister. Like, he really is. And he's got this grin and the voice that they give him. Like, the voice actor, again crushing it absolutely yeah. crushing it and then they put this effect on his voice that makes it extra eerie and you feel uncomfortable listening to him speak you yeah. genuinely do and so it's such like a, a really a powerful effect when he's there and winning and you feel so good when he loses and again it's not somebody who's evil for the sake of evil more <laughs> i'm gonna like juggernaut like i'm gonna rob the bank <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, he is absolutely the darwinian scientist i'm doing everything just to see what i can do why i don't know because yeah. let's see what happens when i test that guy let's see what happens when i genetically experiment on that guy why i don't know i love it like he is such a good villain and i i Mr. Sinister, I would love an entire arc with Mr. Yeah. Sinister as the villain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a villain, I want to see more of the uh, Hellfire Club. We we see them yes, a little bit with Phoenix. So Except um, the, the, the what are they called? The Inner Circle because they couldn't say Hellfire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I think they're called the Inner Circle. Yeah, in the, that, that in, makes in sense. The, the that show. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever realized that they never called them Hellfire Club. I'm just looking like that's the Hellfire Club. That's who that is. Right. So uh, we know them as that because we read yeah. the comics. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> So I, I want I want more of them. I want more of them would be good. Flesh those out. Um, and really, I mean, it's the same reason I, I put uh, X Force down as more screen time. A lot of mm. these, a lot of these groups that and, and 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 Alpha Force is another one. You know that that we see them for like an episode or two, but we don't really get to see all the characters fleshed out. Uh, and so I want to see more of these teams that we put in there because he, the, you know, we've read the comics. And so let's go ahead and introduce them for an episode. I would love to see a block of episodes dedicated to some of these groups. Again, the X-Men have been on all of these teams and have fought against all of these teams. And so go ahead and have a, a block where Wolverine goes back and it's, and we, we just lay these characters out and these are who they are. I would love to see more of those, um, those teams. Uh, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, as far as heroes go, and I think this is something that uh, we'll agree on, Nightcrawler, man. <laughs> yes. That episode with Nightcrawler, oh my gosh. His, like, calm, Christ-like demeanor. Like, everything he says is just this from his heart Christian standpoint. And, I mean, he's Catholic, but Christian nonetheless. And so he's got, like, this whole mindset of how can I best love and serve these people that are hating me? Mm. What can I do to these people to serve them and support them and not encourage their hate? And that's his entire mindset for the entirety of the episode. Yeah. I don't know in this action drama. I don't know that he throws a single punch. I yeah. don't know that he, except for sometimes against the X-Men to try and stop them from hurting me. Like he protects the people hating him and to see, more of that, please. <laughs> you know, yes. more of this, this whole character that is maybe a pacifist. Maybe that's the way you write them. I don't know more of this character that is so different than these, uh, these combative and, and con conflicting characters. This one guy that's in there just to show love and grace as much as humanly possible would be so interesting if they gave him more time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, I also put down beast was another one. I mean, he's, he's yeah. in several episodes, but Seeing his struggle of 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 not wanting to be a mutant, we don't see that when we come in the series. He's already turned blue. You know, we already have that. But uh, yep. I, I could get on some some Nightcrawler stuff. Some Nightcrawler stuff. Um, oh, Beast for sure. I mean, we we get a little bit of uh, him with the blind gal that she yep. that he's been like uh, treating medically, and then uh, as well as throughout season one, him being in prison. Mm -hmm. But again, it, just like I was talking about with Nightcrawler, his wholehearted desire to leave conflict behind and try to yep. to find peaceful resolution is so interesting. It's so good. Yep. yep. Um, so we have this new series coming out. Uh, this is probably the hardest question for me to answer, and it may be for you as well. Uh, it's looking at you pitching an arc for this new season. Uh, so you're, it can be something, I mean, you can take something from comics and go, I want to see this done, but maybe you have something else that you go, I think this would be interesting. Uh, take it away, man. What you, what you got? So something that happened recently in the comics was that 
mutant kind in its entirety decided we we are done. So like I was talking about earlier with the asteroid M, they all moved to the island of Krakoa and they just lived on Krakoa entirely separate from society. And now they have actually taken that to the extent of we're, we're going to terraform Mars and we are going to go live on Mars. Earth, you do whatever you want down there. Mm -hmm. We're kind of done with humans and Earth right now. We're going to Mars. I think uh, the beginnings of this, I think an arc that is a question of we have the opportunity to entirely separate ourselves from humanity. Do we do that? Do we give up on humans altogether? I think that would be number one, interesting. How are we going to deal with this? Number two, something that kids can understand. You know, that mm -hmm. was the big thing of the original series is kids can understand it and it's still good for grownups. This is something that's really simple of do we give up on other people? And then number three, really really culturally relevant mm. there is so much going on in the world today that people want to absolutely dismiss opposing opinions whether that mm. be political or religious or whatever else if you know you are a democrat and you hear somebody say that they're a republican so often people just want to immediately say oh then i hate you yeah we're done like you I, no I, longer matter to me you no longer matter yeah yeah exactly just to dismiss them entirely and to be able to take that and again, to put it in the mutant perspective instead and ask the question, do we entirely want to give up on people who oppose us? Mm. And I think that would be a really relevant and really cool arc. Yeah, that is. That is. Uh, mine was much more um, uh, non-consequential. But as we've been mm. discussing, adding a few pieces, I think, would be would be really good. So uh, I, I'm glad you brought up Mr. Sinister. I think this would fit really well in a Mr. Sinister plot. My original idea was Leech spending time with certain mutants. Uh, Leech takes the powers from the mutants right. to allow them to experience what life would be like if you didn't have powers. Uh, and maybe I, the idea was, especially with Rogue, being able to just be Rogue, being able to, to be – but maybe uh, Sinister uses Leech to try and tempt them to, um, to give their powers up. Almost like uh, Apocalypse, yeah, yeah. Yep, uh, this could be your life, uh, and um, – Eventually, them realizing they would really rather keep their powers. Now, the, mm -hmm. the as I'm sitting here talking about this, it would be wonderful if that was actually his plan the whole time, so that they uh, even more so dive into their powers, and he's able to manipulate oh. them later. And uh, so, I don't know. I, I like mm -hmm. that idea of of having Leech being able to see what they look like normally. You know, like what mm -hmm. would what would their lives? How would their lives change if they were able to be normal? Uh, I'm thinking you know, Jubilee being able to go back home and be with her parents or whatever else, you know, or something. I don't know. I, I, no, I absolutely that. that even like you were saying with Jubilee, I think that would be a really interesting, you know, two episode arc where she goes home and her family is there and they're so happy and loving and you know, they're like, Oh, Oh. And then she comes to this realization. They really, really love me right now without my powers. Mm -hmm. And then she hits, it hits her, which means they don't really love me. Mm. They love yeah. me without my powers yeah. and and I don't want that. I don't, yeah. I, I, this is, you know, and so having this, like this realizing that's conditional, heavily conditional love right. hits her. And now she's like, never mind. I don't want yeah. this. I, I want to go back to the people who <laughs> loved me for my completion, you know, over. And again, relevant, relevant yes. to being accepted in society and yes. having to change yourself for those around you. Like that would be such a great story arc. Yeah. I love yes. that. That's a great idea. Maybe they're sitting around the table and dad's like, just being completely derogatory against mutants, you know, like they're watching the news or whatever else. And she's like, they never made, they never belittled you for being human. And so they were, I was accepted and you would have been accepted too. And yeah, I like that. I like that. That would, uh, that's real good, good, man. Mm, I think mm. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we're going to flip it around and we're going to talk about if we were in X-Men. Okay. Um, uh, if you were in X-Men, what would your powers be? What would your call sign be? I've got two that I thought of, but, uh, let me hear what you got. I mean, gasp, this is something I have thought about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. All right. I saw this question here and I'm like, I know exactly yeah. the answer. Let me go ahead and pull. There's the file. There's the file. Yeah, yeah there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if, uh, when I was a kid, it was always obviously the Superman-esque type thing. Strong, fly, zap, rah, rah. But when I got older, when I like started getting into my young adult years, I'm like, no, 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 no. Way more practical way smarter and so to this day i'm 40 years old this, like i have settled on <laughs> technopathy 
Okay. It's the ability to be able to mentally speak with and control machines. Nice. We live in an entirely digital society, especially with like AI stuff these mm -hmm. days. Being able to go in and just tell AI, hey, write this entire thing for me and then go do it over there. And like, and I'm doing it from another room entirely. Like just being able to have all this stuff happen and control my brain, it would be such an incredibly powerful thing, but also wildly subtle. Like nobody would have any idea how it's happening, where it's happening from. And then hardwire, hardwire would be my name. So nice. because oh, I'm the one that's plugged in, man, I'm the one situation. So have you read the X Heroes series by Peter Kleins? No. So uh, write it down. It, it's, a, it's a really good series. Um, it's superheroes meets uh, vampire zombie apocalypse kind of thing. Um, but there's a character in there that's in one of the later books uh, where he um, possesses a vehicle. Like he becomes the vehicle. And so like, uh, and there's all this stuff tied in there, whatever else. Uh, it's... It, the powers are all very, I think, very interesting. They're very neat the way they've kind of done it. Um, but uh, X Heroes is the first one, and there's a whole bunch that come out. Like four or five books come after that are pretty good. Um, but nice, nice. Well, so funny enough, the the first one I have, Supersonic Flight. If I had to pick one power, it's Supersonic mm -hmm. Flight. Not flight like the speed with which I can move, you know, where I'm getting tired uh, right. swimming through the air. Uh, Supersonic Flight is always... I always pick that. I don't care what else you got up there. Um, <laughs> that's that's it. Uh, and so I was thinking, okay, if I was if that was my power, what would I want my call sign to be? I thought blip, like a blip on the radar. Like oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah, just boom, there yeah. it goes. That's good. <laughs> so, I like that. I like uh, that. But then I started thinking, me, like if it was me, what do I have? What can I do? Because that's a lot of times when you look at their origin stories, it has something to do with their personality or something they're going right, through or whatever right. it is, and that's what activates that. Uh, and so I thought vocal generation, being able to speak things and them happen, you know, like uh, telling a story and it just kind of not necessarily changing the entire world, of course, but being able to talk about something and having it appear in my hands. Um, and so I thought Weaver, like that'd be the name being Weaver. So, uh, so yeah, that, I thought that'd be neat. I thought it'd be neat being able to tell a story and some of those things happening. Maybe there's some telepathy in there, you know, like right, this is right. what happens. Um, but uh, but Weaver would. would I, uh, I'm literally right there with you because my other one is talking about things that we naturally have. I'm a professional speaker. My degree is in preaching. You know all this stuff. So I thought to myself, uh, like some sort of charm ability. Like yeah. <laughs> while I'm saying, I can like impact and convince people really yeah. well. And silver was mine, like a silver tongue. Oh, I like it. That's so, good. Silver is my call sign. Yeah, that's yeah, really I, good. Oh, <laughs> well, you know what? Now uh, let's quit our jobs. Let's write our own comic series. Here there we go. It is. We yep, got done, it done. Done. Go. Hang on, there. we need an artist though. <laughs> I cannot draw. You know, <laughs> I do know a guy. Uh, he is way talented, but it takes him about six months longer than we would want. It just, it just is. But, uh, <laughs> we'll have, you know what? We'll have Todd Turner from Mosaic Fan Art just do mosaics, and so those be like scenes from it. There we go. I like it. I like it. It takes eighteen years <laughs> and eight hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yes, yes. But for real, if y'all haven't seen Mosaic Fan Art, go check him oh, out. Check he, him out. Stuff him is out. spectacular. Um, so, uh, they've got all kinds of spinoff teams. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a draft. And so, uh, you'll go first and then I'll go twice and then you'll go twice until we get five. So, um, uh, I want us to, I want you to think about your team. Uh, it doesn't have to have necessarily a theme. My, my oh, two lineups. Okay, good. My two lineups 100%. do, uh, and then a name for that team. And, uh, I'm really regretting letting you go first, but you are the guest. And so I will let you, <laughs> I'll let you go first. Just know. So just know that I have one right here. And if you don't take it first, I'm going to take it. So you, that's you fine. Go for it. You that's go fine. For because it. again, mine is on a theme. And okay. so uh, I'll, I'll wait, I'll save the name of my team till the end. I like it. I like it. So right off the bat, I'm taking forge. Okay. We're good. Forge. Okay. Tell me. Absolute genius. Yeah. Brilliant builder. Like his, so his literal mutant power is that he is a technological genius. That's it. So he can build anything. Obviously, your comic book, uh, as a comic book writer, you can use that as a MacGuffin and just say anything that you need, he can build that thing mechanically. And so it, it, this is going to be a real key thing. On, so like he was the first one I had to pick. It's going to be key for what I have going forward. So Forge is my first pick. This is the only, my first pick is the only one that's not on theme for anything. And um, I just learned about this yesterday. Um, I'm going with Night Spider because Kurt Wagner is the new Spider-Man as September. Nightcrawler no. is Spider-Man. 
What? Yes. I had no idea. September 6th, the first issue comes out where he takes on the mantle of Spider-Man. It's pretty fantastic. So I just have to take Frantic it. Frantic Googling. <laughs> just got to take it uh, because you mentioned Nightcrawler being one of your favorites. It's like, okay, just in case he's on the team, I need to make sure I grab him. So, yes. So, um, Nightcrawler. Uh, yes. So I don't know what they're going to call him. Night Spider, right. Spider Crawler. I don't know. But uh, it's, yes. Interesting. Spider. That's super cool. I'm yes. into that. I'm I'm watching him teleport in a spider. I'm not watching. I'm <laughs> seeing pictures of him teleporting yeah. in a Spider-Man suit right now. That's crazy. Bonkers. Right. So uh, Spider-Man is like Batman. Pretty much everybody's worn the mask at some point. You know, like it just passes around. And <laughs> yes. Well, I showed it. So so Zeke, my son, his favorite superhero is Miles Morales Spider-Man. His favorite X-Men choice, is Nightcrawler. And so I pulled the picture up and just kind of slid it in front of him, and he's going. Why does why does he have a tail and why does he have and he like put the piece yeah so uh, that'd be that um, I have several of these others uh, as well that so I'll I'll just, I'll just keep going I'll just keep going uh, so Night Spider Nightcrawler Spider Man um, that is you know uh, that's my infiltrator you know that's my get mm -hmm. in there and figure things out that's my reconnaissance that's my my long range whatever yeah um, and so uh, as far as my brains of the operation go i'm going with my boy beast uh, i want beast at the helm i want beast uh kind of running things and so uh, my second choice is going to be beast he's one that can stay back at command and run things or if things get hairy no pun intended uh he can get in the middle of there and, and take care of things so my number Don't two lie. Pick, pun yeah. very much intended <laughs> don't you lie <laughs> so my number two pick my number two pick is uh is beast so i'm gonna go ahead and write these down so your first was forge Mine was I'm gonna call him Night Spider because I don't know what they're gonna call him. Right, uh, right. And then my second was Beast. And who are your third, second, and third picks? I, I'm I don't know if you guys can hear my frantic clicking over here because I'm also writing my <laughs> team out here. So as well, pick number two, Mystique. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Mystique is uh brilliant. Yes, she is. Which I mean, something that was revealed, uh, I think, like a few five or six years ago, is that she is incredibly old as well that as like her shape shifting includes just shifting her body to be younger and so uh she's like an unknown age kind of like wolverine mm. although we do know how old wolverine is now but like just super duper old and so she has like tons of life experience she is a master tactician she's always thinking three or four steps ahead of everybody else uh she's been a lot of people's like second in command and then every single time it turns out that she was always like duping them on the side or whatever else. <laughs> like, you know, she's actually been pulling the strings for such a long time. She's just this brilliant, brilliant person. And then uh, the obvious thing that she can shapeshift into yes. any person that she wants. And then on top of that, my second pick, Rogue. Oh, she was on my list. Nice, nice. So not only is str strength flight real practical stuff right there. Yeah. But on top of this, the ability to touch somebody and gain their memories their abilities and their like talents, like actual things that they have learned is going to be real key and real vital for my, my team's purpose here. So on top of that, Mystique and Rogue have worked together in the past quite a mm -hmm. bit. And so they have a, a, so a strong dynamic as long as they get along and don't hate each other, a strong dynamic. Nice. Uh, that was the question I was going to ask you. Um, I was watching the episode yesterday where Morph comes back and Morph changes into other heroes like mystique does but he has their powers like i don't remember that being the thing nope. i saw that too and i'm like no no the show that's not how that works <laughs> <laughs> like he can fly now like i don't but if, like, if that's the case i want morph and anyone who's like morph and then right, no joke gonna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um now now mimic mimic's not my choice i had him listed there uh mimic mm -hmm. is another one who's able to to do those but i think there's probably limitations there but uh excellent choice excellent choice excellent choice thank you um okay so um so my next two, my my third choice and my fourth choice are in tandem. Are in tandem, um, and um, I could have gone. I could have gone. Magneto and Wolverine was where I was going to go. Was those two mm. on a team? Um, I'll leave those up if you wanted to grab one of those. But I'm going to go with their daughters. I'm going to go Polaris and X23. Nice. Um, and All so right. um, the really when I started thinking about uh, my team, the thought of an adamantium skeleton being used as a weapon rather than a liability on a team. Uh, the ability for Polaris to be able to rocket X-23 wherever she needs to, you know, to, to be able to move her around or whatever else uh, uh, to aid, whatever. Um, 
uh, I thought would be good. Uh, and so I've got Polaris. So you've got Magneto's abilities, which are extremely beneficial um, and very, um, I, I, just, I, I can see that working out really well. And then oh, X-23, uh, again, muscle. There's a lot of muscle on this team. There's a lot of muscle on this team. Uh, and I'll really, say this. In a face-to-face -face fight, your team's gonna beat my team up. <laughs> That's for real. <laughs> so, so you know, uh, there's 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 a lot of muscle, and um, and really, my last, my, no matter who you pick for, uh, the, the, my last one's probably gonna be more muscle. But um, but anyways, those are those are some ones I looked at, and I was like, okay, I like I, I like these these two in tandem. Uh, uh, yeah. So often, Magneto just eliminates Wolverine from the battlefield because he's got a metal skeleton. What would it look like? One point, quite literally, for like a long while in the story of Wolverine, he yes. rips the metal out of his body. It's a really good arc in Wolverine's <laughs> story. Yeah. <laughs> so what would they look like working together? You know, I had this picture of uh, a X-23 missile, you know, just just sent through the air. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like that picture. And so uh, so, so that's, that's where I went with that. That's where I went with that. So um, those are my third and fourth picks. All right, Stephen, who are your fourth and final pick for your team i'm so i'm so happy because i got my whole team i this is my nice, ideal team nice. for what i'm gonna go with here and my last two are kind of left field ones and so okay. this is why i'm uh i'm not surprised i got these two so i saved them for last uh shadow cat kitty pride yeah. is my is my fourth pick uh her ability number one to go through walls uh, any solid surface is again ideal for the purpose of my team but then second of all a uh, little known like side thing is when she passes through electronics she entirely disrupts and like messes up and breaks whatever electronics she passes through nice. and that's just like a utility thing that would be really really useful an alarm's going off she passes her hand right through it whatever it breaks and so whatever i was like just this ability to disrupt electronics like yeah. with you and metal you know with polaris the whole world runs on metal and electronics these days yeah. so real real the kind of utility ability there and then finally and here's my way out of left field one cypher okay cypher is a little known x-men he died a while back but he is a uh a semi-telepathic but what his like actual ability is called omnilinguist Okay. He can telepathically speak and communicate with any living thing, anything that has a language. So he is entirely understanding of all languages, all you know, tongues, everything. He's just an omnilinguist to a semi-telepathic extent. Cypher is my last pick there. Nice. Nice. Um, so uh my last pick, I was trying to decide between between two. Um I was trying to decide between two. They're very similar in one way and very different than the rest. The two I was trying to decide between, I'm not going to go with Colossus. Colossus was one that I was going to he go He was on for. my list too. He was one uh, of my backup ones. <laughs> he was on my list. But instead, I'm going to go with Mercury. Mercury is able to turn into liquid metal and mm. can kind of adjust herself in that, in that way. Uh, again, being able to sneak in, being able to get into tight places, uh, I, I thought it'd be good. And also having Polaris be able to aid that in a synergistic way, being able oh, to move yeah. and, and, and do things. So um so uh so yes, so that's that's my team. So your team is uh, if you were gonna go with the girl for your fifth one, I was gonna assume your your team's name was Forge's Angels. That was gonna be my guess between uh, <laughs> Mystique, Rogue, Shadow Cat, and yeah, it's Forge's yeah. Angels. Uh, so you have Forge, Mystique, Rogue, Shadow Cat, and Cipher, uh, and then That's I right. have Night Spider, Beast, Polaris, X twenty three, and Mercury. Uh, so tell me the name of your team and uh, and and kind of where that is. My team's name is Espionage. Oh, I like X it. Dash yeah. X Espionage. And this is a 100% spy based espionage team pulling off the heist, getting the info that you need, getting into the places, doing the things that nobody's expecting, never sees happening, having Forge in there, developing all the gadgets you need, being a genius on top of this, Mystique being the master tactician and being able to take the form of any person to sneak into anywhere rogue's ability what's the password here i don't know let me touch this guy real quick he knows the password now i know the password <laughs> cool well we need to learn how to operate this plane cool let me touch this guy now i know how to operate the plane let's get out of here you know things like that <laughs> shadow cat's ability to basically infiltrate anywhere get inside any place as she needs to and then of, of course cypher what if of the other four they do not speak whatever language whatever code whatever's going on here the omnilinguist of cypher is that last little linchpin that there, there will be nothing that they do not understand. He will always understand whatever encrypted code, whatever else. 
this dude's got it. So it's a 100 espionage based team to get whatever information, to steal whatever thing, to get whatever code. This is the team. Nice. Um, so I had, like I said, I had two that I was looking at, two groupings, and I ended up with half of each, which is kind of funny the way that works out. <laughs> um, but I think looking at this, one fits better than the other. So the two team names I was looking at was X Metal because I had uh, Colossus Ooh, I was going to add in there, uh, and um, you've got uh, X twenty three, and I was going to do Iron Spider instead of uh, Night Spider. So you had mm, that mm. that suit. But I think it fits better with uh, I'm gonna put my X at the end to Animalistics X. Uh, and it's a nice. brute force team. Brute force team. You've got Night Spider, Beast, uh, X twenty three are all very animalistic in their abilities. Uh, and then Polaris and Mercury are just kind of keeping the leash on them a little bit. But uh, they would definitely be. Where yours is espionage. Mine is brute force. Mine is get in and get That's out. It. When we get caught, we call you. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Dang Skippy. Dang Skippy. Uh, so so yeah. So that would uh, that would be that would be my team. The animalistics. Uh, and. Um, yeah, that would be good. That'd be I good. love it. I love it, man. <laughs> all right, so we have all kinds of content for our X Men fanfic. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be good. I. Uh, this is a true story. Yeah, I wrote a script. Or, uh, script's not the right word. I wrote a uh, comic book. You know, uh, pitch comic book pitch. Yeah. Uh, that my friend actually started illustrating. This is way back in college, but it was Batman, the animated series Batman somehow gets uh like teleported to the <laughs> x-men 92 world nice. and him establishing his life there and you know whatever else there so it's a it's really interesting it was kind of a tongue you meant you mentioned fanfics so yeah like, I, I i did that for real once <laughs> listen so those are some of my favorite comics i'm looking at i just got back from a friend of mine uh batman versus ninja turtles uh i've got that yeah. one and so that one i've got um I also have uh, Justice League versus Power Rangers. Uh, it was another one that that where the Power Rangers show up and they're not sure if they're good or bad. I, I enjoy those crossovers. I like them. I like they're them. They're fun. They are fun. Yeah, they're good. So, so Steve, tell me about we're, we're talking about X Men. Had a good time talking about X Men, uh, but I also want to hear a lot about what you're doing with Save Point. What is Save Point? Um, why is that such a big deal for you right now? Why is that uh, a driving force in your life right now? Um, let's start there. Tell me about Save Point. So Save Point is an organization. Basically, the real simple thing that we tell people is we help nerds plug into nerd-friendly churches. It's a real simple, basic pitch, uh, and it sounds really down to earth and a lot of like why we get like, is that necessary? But when we go deep into it, there's real two key things why we feel like this is super necessary. And number one is that there is a lot, a lot of church hurt out there mm. from nerds who were told when they were younger or even as adults, video games are a stupid waste of time. It is evil and sinful to play Dungeons and Dragons. As a Christian, you cannot play Magic the Gathering. And like on and on and on, these things that are basically a condemnation of our beloved, beloved hobbies. You know, if if so many people out there, if they heard that two grown men with children are talking about X-Men, they would be like, that sounds, they're, they're clearly dumb and immature. When the reality is actually, no, we love good. <laughs> okay. Yes, but not in this case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much judgment out there and there's so much church hurts. And then on top of that, there's just a lot of assumption that all churches are that way. Right. But the truth is they're not. There are so many churches out there that are a hundred percent. We would break them into nerd friendly. And that's like a church, like my church, nerd friendly church, where if you come in and you say you play D and D, they'll be like, "That's awesome, man! Cool! Hey, there's Steve over there. He loves D and D too. Uh, there, there's uh, you know um, uh, the, the the foxes. They they also love the the D and D or whatever else. And so just we got that going on. Then there's nerd seeking churches, mm. and those are churches that are we have board game nights, we have Magic the Gathering tournaments here, right. we have this stuff, and so. These churches exist out there and it is such a big passion of ours mm. to help people get that in-person discipleship. Because on top of this, the second thing is that nerds retreat to the internet a lot. We have this habit of the world can sometimes be tough or awkward or not understanding of our hobbies, but it's real easy to find a place on the internet to plug in. And because of that, Internet usage has gone up 1,000% in the past 20 years. Uh, it's it's uh, something like um, the average phone time for an American is seven and a half hours a day every day of time on their cell phone screen, right. 
Yeah. Uh, it, like 60%, th- man, the stats are on my webpage. I should be here. Like 60% of adults say that they have near constant screen time, mm. like m- awake to sleep near constant yeah. screen time. Yeah. And so this whole thing of having an in-person face-to-face community is becoming a thing of the past. And we're seeing depression rates rise, suicide rates rise, like all of this mental illness and all anxiety, uh, just stuff is rising as well. And a big solution to this is having that in-person, loving Christ-like discipleship and in community, uh, in-person community. And that's that's what we want to help provide. Awesome. Awesome. A couple of things in there that I think are really great. Number, or well, really interesting. One's really interesting. One's really great. I mentioned this uh, recently with a church staff member. The fact that the word church hurt exists and we know exactly what you're saying is so yep. sad uh, yep. that there that it is it is common and not just for against nerds. I mean, just in general, that church hurt where people that should love Christ and should move towards Him and should be supportive and loving like Christ did, and yet we have this term church hurt, and everyone goes, "Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about because mm-hmm. I've either experienced it, been a part of it, or at least seen it done." Um, is is terrible, and so uh, I think that's a a a beautiful thing to combat by trying to find churches that are. Um, that are open, that are really evangelistic, really is the deal. I think when we see church hurt, typically it's in it's based on tradition rather than based on anything that has to do with the actual mission of the church. But if you can find a church that has a good mission and is willing to be be welcoming, I think that's great. Uh, I wrote down um, we we did a we did a spot on your Twitch stream several weeks ago, maybe months ago yeah. at this point. Golly, it, it time runs together. <laughs> Time's a flat circle. Oh yeah. my goodness! And so, and, and we're definitely a nerd friendly church. Our church is. Uh, it's the mm-hmm. same thing. Oh, you like this? Go find CJ. He's right over here. Uh, he would love to talk to you about that. Um, I it was that way when I started spending time with my wife's family. That they're all very much outdoorsy, country, whatever else. But she had a cousin who loved Pokemon, and so like he was my best friend. Like he was up all me. <laughs> let's talk. Um, but I love the idea of a. Uh, a nerd seeking church. Uh, I live in an area that is really rural, you know? And so uh, I I'm thinking a church in Lake Butler in the area that is near where I live, that was nerd seeking, I think would do very well. Con- Cause I don't think that that typically exists in that circle uh, that if you don't play baseball, do four H um, you know, all those things that in the room, we don't have a place for you here. And I, I'm like, golly, I need to meet with some youth pastors in Lake Butler and go, let, what, what can we do? to have a, a lighthouse, uh, a safe house, a, a beacon uh, to be able to to bring them in because they are there. They are there. I, I don't remember the, the statistic is, but it's over 62% consider themselves to be gamers, uh, right. you know, teenagers. So it's over 62%. So it's not like there that doesn't exist. Uh, there should be a safe place for them to go. Um, uh, a go ahead, big sorry. thing, I was a youth pastor for a little more than a decade. And a big conversation that I had with parents a lot was they'd say things like, my kid just... He just wants to play video games all the time. And I wish he'd do something else. And I'm like, okay, well, yes, there should be a limit. Like, don't, don't let him do it as often right. as well. But what would you rather them to be doing? I, I don't know. Football. Okay. Objectively, like uh, uh, intrinsically, what makes football better right. or, or more life applicable than video games? Yeah. At least he'd be getting exercise. Okay, true, he'd be getting exercise, but he's not getting hand-eye coordination. He's not problem solving. He's not like, we're, we're just talking about different hobbies here. Right. They're, they're both equally valid, equally useful, equally fun and beneficial if used healthily and in the right way. So people have all of these presupposed things about uh, about video games and other nerddom when really it's just culture that has set up these these uh, standards right. yeah and so another part of what save point uh, intends to do we're only six months old we're like super actually five months old we're super duper young so we haven't gotten here yet but our one of our goals is to help train churches on how to be nerd friendly here's nice. how to hold a video game tournament here's how to have a board game day here here's why it's okay to play D. here's why it's okay to have match right. gathering Right. This is all contents we're planning on putting out. We have all this stuff in the works, but you know, just we're still young, so we're still working out a lot of things here. But yeah, nice. So one of the things that I appreciate about what you guys are doing is that you are also, it seems like, are always online somewhere doing something to connect. So tell me about some of those things that you're doing to um, not just get the word out, but to to build community uh, through through online interaction. Yeah, so we have a lot of different things that we do. Uh, probably the most uh, popular, I guess I would say, is uh, every other week right now, we are streaming with a nerd-friendly pastor. That's how we met. Uh, a nerd-friendly ministry leader of some sorts, where 
we just play games with them. Uh, we did what did we play? We, we played Wingspan. That? Wingspan. Oh, that's right. We did the board game. We played Wingspan. We did uh, Wingspan and board game, which I have played like six times since then. It's so <laughs> good. By the way, I have to apologize to you because we're playing other games right now on mm-hmm. Board Game Alliance that I don't know how to play. Okay. And it was really funny. I committed myself to saying, you know what? I'm not going to learn how to play. I'm going to blind play these games. So I don't know if I am making the most obnoxious, entirely wild plays on the planet. I have no idea what I'm doing in these games. So <laughs> No, no, no. So with Wingspan in particular, I never really pay attention to the other boards anyway. So the fact that you and I were talking mm-hmm. was actually to your detriment because I'm going, this is what he's going for. I think I could probably – I could Bogart that bird real quick. So, <laughs> uh, so no, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. I, that one was in particular picked for the purpose of – you don't really have to know what you're doing. Just grab right, it, right. feed it, and put it in the put it in the spot. So uh, yeah, we we stream with nerd friendly uh, pastors. I just uh, recently streamed with uh, Stephen uh, Searles, like Pearls. Stephen Searles from the Point Church at Federal Way in Federal Way, Washington. He and I played golf with your friends, and we talked about the Point, and that's what we do. Like we stream with them, we talk, we have a good yeah. time, and also they get to talk about their church and to look into the camera and invite people to their church to say, "Hey, I love video games. I love board games. I love what you love. This is where my church is. If you're mm-hmm. in the area." we lovingly invite you in on top of that we have an every other week podcast called the nerdy gritty uh and this is a uh uh, it's a nerd like a pop culture based podcast but we talk about it on like a much deeper more serious level so it's not just like what's the coolest marvel movie right now uh we talk about like hey hogwarts legacy just came out and the flash is going to release soon but these highlight really problematic people that people are frustrated with, like J.K. Rowling and Ezra Miller. Right. How do we as nerds uh, take in content like this or address content like this while also being true to our beliefs and the things that we stand for as Christians? And so there's just like a lot of these serious conversations that we're having uh, mm. from, from the perspective of nerddom on the nerdy gritty. Uh, I think uh, coming up here, we're going to be talking about... Um, Tears of the Kingdom and uh, just like our hopes for the story of Zelda. We're actually right. having a guest uh, called uh, Legend of Zyro, who is like this Legend of Zelda lore master. Mm. And we're going to be talking about like, what could we get out of a deeper Legend of Zelda story? Like, what, what can we do with this? So, yeah, that, that's kind of our thing. And then finally, uh, every Monday is Magical Monday. And this is all Twitch, by the way, twitch.tv slash min. Uh Magical Monday, I, I stream Hogwarts Legacy for three hours. <laughs> that's that's the beginning and end of that one. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Listen, I, it's I enjoy. I, I I like. I enjoyed your stream. I enjoy going on your stream um, because it's one of the ones that I can leave in the background while I'm getting work done. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. like I look, there was one where you were, I could I could hear the same puzzle noise over and over and over again. And then I was like, let me look and see what's happening. You know, I was like, uh, hey, st- hey, hey, Steve, try this. Try this. You're like, oh. Okay. All right. That's, that's it. That works. There so it I, is. You I did it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. That's cool. I love it, man. I love it. So uh, I've got the nerdy gritty podcast written down. I knew that you were doing it, but I couldn't remember what it was called. So I need to go ahead and add that to my list. Um, and yes, all that stuff on. Uh, so that's uh, nerdy gritty is, is I'm guessing audio kind of found wherever you find podcasts. So actually uh, it used to be, if you look up uh, on your regular podcaster, the nerdy dash gritty, uh, you will find our podcast. You will find years of content, but uh, we just aren't at a point that we can afford the RSS feed right now. So okay. we haven't had any new episodes in months. Uh, hey, if you're listening and you listen to our old stuff and you like it, uh, if you want to help donate to Save Point Ministries, uh, it's fifteen dollars a month for an RSS feed. It's like real simple and basic, but we're just obviously brand new ministry, so we're you know kind of tightening our budget here, but. Uh, yeah, if that's something you guys want to donate to, we'd really appreciate that. But um, so right now it's only on Twitch and then on our YouTube afterwards. So I guess all those socials, everything, we are on Twitch, uh, Twitch, Facebook, and Instagram at Save Point Min, just M-I-N. Uh, intentionally that because it makes people ask, what's the Min stand for? And then we get to tell them ministries. Here's what we do. You know, so it, it really helps that. And then, but on YouTube, uh, and then the website, it's the full Save Point Ministries, and uh, you can find us uh, on for both of those things. So, yeah. Nice. Well, Steven, man, I appreciate you coming on and talking X-Men, uh, and I have like 13 notes for us to talk about at a future date. Uh, it's good I stuff. Love it. Good stuff. I love it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, man, thanks for being on the show. 
I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me, CJ. We'll see you all later. Well, thank you for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss uh, any future content that we've got coming out. And I mentioned in our interview uh, about my boys singing the X-Men theme song. That's going to drop on our Instagram in a couple of days, and you don't want to miss it. I mean, I think my kids are cute, but a lot of people tell me my kids are cute. And uh, it's, it's quite the show, quite the show. So make sure you are um, following us on Instagram at nextgen underscore nerd so you don't miss that. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at nextgen underscore nerd. We're on YouTube at nextgen underscore nerd. And we're on Twitch as nextgennerd25. Um, and if there's anything else you need to know, it's probably found on our website at nextgennerd.com. We really appreciate the support. Please continue to uh, subscribe, share the episodes. You'll find all of those on our website, so you can share them on your social media. And we've got a whole lot coming up next month for Miyazaki May. Some great interviews already. I'm still kind of buttoning uh, a few of them up, and it's going to be it's going to be something. So look forward to seeing you guys next week. And until then, peace out, Sea Crest. <laughs>